You need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't ask. Okay, buddy. You have I'm sorry that we're that we had a 15 minute delay. Um <laughs> we yes, we the between the eclipse and Mercury Gantanza, we have we had a problem. And it what? was you okay, honey? I'm you okay. Go? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to a fruit bowl right now, but that's <laughs> oh my god. James was having trouble getting on for whatever anything he did, it just didn't work. It didn't work. The phone didn't work. The two computers didn't work. The studio I have didn't work. It's brand new. So I finally got on my phone here and I'm, I'm speaking to you from the phone, <laughs> which is in a fruit, fruit bowl. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> oh so my God. Forgive the angle. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a day. <laughs> well, I, you know, it was a very powerful day with this, with this uh, eclipse, total it's, eclipse. Yeah, it, nothing works. Nothing <laughs> seems to work. Yeah. And I, as I, you know, I, I've been talking about that Gandanta point, and that really is where we are with this at this exact time. Exactly. It's Gandanta. Gandanta. It's Gandanta. And Gandanta is that degree and mm -hmm. happens to be in Mercury. Mercury controls communication. It com controls our devices, our com computers, our uh, phones, all kinds of things. Electrical. It, it controls all of that. And so right now it's at a Gandanta point, which is between... Uh, a fire sign Aries and moving into Pisces as we speak at this exact moment. So when can that you see happens, me okay, Kelly? I can see you okay. just <laughs> fine and, and I, I can hear it. you, which is really great. But this, this was, um, you know, what an incredible day. I mean, this eclipse knocked a lot of people out. I thought it was incredibly awe inspiring and unbelievable. And what an incredible experience to have today it really was amazing. I received a lot of photos of people from all over the country uh, with all different uh, views of the uh, of the solar eclipse. So it was pretty amazing. It was really amazing. Gosh. I now, mean, when you were in Wisconsin, you couldn't see it, correct? Uh, yeah. Well, we, oh, we saw 86%. Oh, I saw your video. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we did. It, and I, it was just, to me, it looked like a little piece of somebody was eating cheese or something. It was, of course, in Wisconsin, what else am I going to think? Right. But it was just extraordinary. Uh, what a, um, you know, for everybody, my, my daughter experienced it in the totality in Fort Worth. And she said, Mom, I, I became very emotional. I started to cry. Really? A lot of people did. A lot of people did. It was really, um, it's a big experience if you think about it for and, all and of, of people, humanity. Know, I've heard a lot of people having uh, sudden falls, sudden attacks. One person I know had a, found a mass on their head, uh, inside their head that they had to get operated on. A lot of sudden, like you mentioned earlier last week, sudden changes, sudden like, wow, you know, things that happen all of a sudden, you know, unexpected things. Well, I had, yeah. In fact, one of our people that watch our show, somebody tried to break into her house on Saturday night at three in the morning. And it also happened to my sister-in-law and, and my own sister. The alarm went off at three in the morning with a fire in the building. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of odd things that will happen during this period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, How long does this go on for, Kelly? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to tell you for the next three days, at least, because we are in that period of time during Gandanta and we it's three, it's the eclipse and then three days after. But in actuality and the energy will get better, frankly, at around the 15th of, of uh, April. But right now it is pretty fierce because we also have we have Mercury retrograde and that's going to be in retrograde until the 25th. And it's in Pisces in Vedic astrology, and that makes it complicated because it's weak. And Mercury retrograde, let, let me just tell you, Mercury governs communication and the way we think and technology and travel. So if you are traveling right now from the eclipse or to the delays. eclipse at home, delays, 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 and yeah. problems with there's been a lot of mechanical problems with planes, you know, James. Yeah, so cars also mechanical problems with parts speaking to one another. So yes. there's a lot of cars on the side of the road, a lot of construction on the side of the road, a lot of that stuff happens. Yes. Right? Well, it's interesting too because in Vedic astrology, when a planet is retrograde, it means that it's more powerful because it's really slowed down so much. So the energy of that just kind of 
holds itself and it gets very powerful. So it's during this time that we always advise not a great time to buy a computer, not a great time to buy a car, you know, not a good time to buy appliances because um, you could miss, you know, certain details of things. So it's really just not a, it's a tricky time. Yeah. And, and I have to say that Mercury retrograde is not all bad. I mean, right now we're going to experience it at a very uh, intense time because of the eclipse and the Gandanta degree. But it's not a bad thing because Mercury retrograde gives us a time to go back and redo, yeah. reassess, reflect, renew, revise, rethink. I mean, it's got anything you can put an RE in front of, it really does for us, it brings us back. So, and also what happens during Mercury retrograde, you hear from people that may not want to hear from <laughs> and they come back into your life. You know, old people come back into your life. So old it's kind memories, of old experiences, old things. Yeah. Yes. Right. So true. And I just want to mention that on April 9th and 10th, we have a, sa a conjunction with Mars and Saturn, and that's tomorrow and the next day. And it's in Aquarius and Vedic astrology. And Mars and Saturn are enemies. They're bitter enemies. Mars is like stepping on the gas and Saturn right. is stepping on the brake. Right. And so the friction of the next two days will be intense. And it could have people could have accidents so you really want to you know be real mindful in all of your decisions and all the things that you do be mindful because this kind of energy this kind of friction it, it involves like impatience and people can be frustrated easily and that can go to violence so you really want to make sure that you are really in a calm place in the next couple of days with this kind of intense energy along with the eclipse energy yes so there you go okay. yeah I was just living this out 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, poor James. This was a hard one. I know. From three Are you computers. Feeling? They all didn't work. Three computers. Nothing worked, work. everybody. So three thanks, computers. everybody, for standing by. And we have our wonderful guest who was waiting patiently all the way from Sydney, Australia. Where'd you go? <laughs> Hold on a second. She's going to be. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I mean, poor James. He's had to, you know, roam his house to find a place that worked. Um, uh, Nick Nixon writer says she was definitely wiped out from today. I'm glad you said that, Nixon. I've heard so many people say they were wiped out emotionally from the day. I mean, it was a, a really deep, deep, significant, sacred energy day. And I hope everybody got to do some form of meditation. James, you did a wonderful meditation this Thanks, afternoon Kelly. for it. It was just wonderful. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so if yeah, you, if you only see where I am right now, you'd flip out all. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised about my pantry at this point. <laughs> I, I love you. You have a good pantry. <laughs> every room in your house is wonderful. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, this has been a crazy energy. Trey says brain fog and feeling energy bursts that aren't mine, and it has been draining. I agree, Trey. It's really interesting. Yeah, I, 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 in the afternoon, I was almost like one, one o'clock. I was exhausted. I'm like, why am I so tired? I've never been yeah. tired. Yeah. yeah, that's what Holiday said. Why am I so tired? It's this energy. It's really a deep, deep, deep energy. But again, on on every level, it's a sacred um, energy. So, and, and it means trans uh, transformation because that's it's right. it's in this uh, in Vedic astrology. It's in Pisces, and it's in the twenty seventh nakshatra. The twenty seventh nakshatra is the final one. It's the last one in the last sign. So what it means is the end, <laughs> and then the beginning. And so a <laughs> lot of things. I mean, this is the kind of thing to look at things that you ha are letting go of if you've been. Um, you know, not taking very good care of yourself. Certainly, that would be something that you would, you know, wanting to be doing right now. And it it has to do a lot with you know the way you view the world because it's about changing um, the uh, changing our uh, the consciousness. And if you've had an old pattern of like self criticism or perfectionism or self doubt, right now is the best time to let all of that go and start embracing self-acceptance and unconditional love. It's an extraordinary time. And I think that um, in uh, on the planet, we're going to see a change, a shift in a new consciousness and a new awareness. So this actually is an amazing thing. And the last thing I'll say is on Ju on April 20th, we have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And that is an extraordinarily powerful conjunction that is brings um, a new awareness to the planet. We call it the Great Awakening. And I'll talk about that later on. Wow. Yeah. A powerful time to be alive.
<laughs> there you go. Are you are you set up now? <laughs> I'm in my studio, but I'm just sitting here. My that's better. Yes, that's better. Okay. But I'm still with my phone, which is fine. Well, let's bring in our one of our, our dearest dear friends. friends. <laughs> our dear friend Janelle Campbell. Hi, Janelle. <laughs> Hi, Janelle. Thank you for being I so know. patient. Let me have a look at you. Make sure it's real. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Janelle. I got my oh, eclipse glasses. We didn't get it here, of course. We're oh. in the southern hemisphere, so I think it was like four in the morning or something. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. But we're feeling the effects, aren't we, James? That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I love to share it now. I love to share. I know. I you know. You saw me pull my hair out five minutes ago. Yes. It's yes, great. that's. I know. It's lovely. We have a great time behind the scenes. <laughs> People don't know. Right. They have no idea. <laughs> Keep it real. Keep it real. Keeping it real, definitely. Very good. Well, Kel, I think we've just got to, you know, batten down, don't we, over the we next couple of days. batten down. Exactly. We've got to batten down. And, I mean, again, and it's funny because Janelle and I are teaching a class on star seeds. That it's when is that, Kelly? May. May 10th. May 10th. Uh, May 10th in the United States and May 11th and the in, 11th here in Sydney. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so we're and it, it, star seeds really bring a different level of consciousness to the planet. Sure do. Sure so do. this is a perfect time, you know, with this eclipse and the change of consciousness and the shift of everything. It's a yeah. perfect time if okay. you would, Kelly, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, star seeds. So you think right now with all these major changes that are happening, that the planet is filled with star seeds right now because of these happenings? Because Absolutely. Absolutely. Because before we incarnate we have a vibration that we're going to bring in to the planet. Mm -hmm. And so we would be ready and star seeds are ready for this shift in energy. Yeah. The thing with star seeds is the reason I think it's so important is that they need to know how important they are because star seeds start to feel that they're not from here. They don't know why they're here. They don't want to live. They, they don't have any friends. They can't seem to get their life together. And what Janelle and I really want to tell them is that, you know, this is what they come in to do. They come in to bring yeah. a, a shift in consciousness, a kindness, a mm. warmth, a compassion that is has been missing on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> right? and, I think too, yeah. <laughs> and I think too that we start to uh, get a bit uneasy within ourselves when we start to awaken to these things that we've agreed to come here to learn, talk about, accept about ourselves. So and why I think do you think that happens? That's a great, great statement that you said. Why do you think it well, happens? Well, I think because it's not the normal thing. You know, it's not me just going to the shop or doing the thing or going to work. Other things start to rise from within us that we've forgotten about in our soul contract. And uh, as part of STAR, our seeds and awakening is all part of that. And we get really uneasy because we can't control the, right. the essence control. that's moving within us. And, of course, earthlings are such controlling little freaks. <laughs> we can't, you know, we can't handle it if I don't know exactly what's going on. Right. But, yeah, I think uh, so, you know, being interested, coming to a course or, a, a, you know, anything uh, starts to pique your interest and your soul starts to get excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To have the memories. And you're going to do yeah. an incredible uh, meditation. <laughs> yes, so tell us about the program exactly, you guys. What's going to be happening during your, your program? Well, Kelly's going to be talking about star seeds and all the uh, the different the, the origins and where you origins. might possibly be from and why you yes. incarnated at this exact time to do this work. We're going to be talking about yep. that. And, and James, we should tell you that Janelle. I did not know that Janelle loved star seed information, and she. I didn't know that. Oh, and yes, Janelle, she's not from here. She's not. Okay. Here. Oh no, I know she wasn't from here, but she was interviewing me for one of her projects. And I somehow brought it up and she said, oh, oh, we, okay, exploded. we exploded on this, you know, and that's how we decided to have this class because, we well, did, you know, indeed. James, we taught this class, you and I taught this yeah, class yeah. like three or four years ago yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. a real big hit. Everybody loved it. It's incredible. Yeah. And one of the things that people love the most was how they can recognize that they're star seeds and where they're from. That exactly. Really, and you'll be covering that as well. Oh, no, we're going to be calling details of things because I can yeah. look at somebody, I'm sure you can too, Janelle, and go, oh no, not only are you not yeah. from here, I actually know where you're from. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a recognition. Yeah. Yeah. 
And for those that are kind of new or just, you know, starting to feel these things, you know, I'm going to take them into the centre of themselves and allow that opening of connection with their guides, their star being guides and those that gather. So it's not just, uh, you know, a little bit of talk. And, and information and learning, it's all of that, plus they're going to recognise from within themselves a real experience of what it is to be connected to... Where they're from, their origin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a question for you, Janelle, if you don't mind me jumping in here, excuse me. I, it just came to me, I have to say it before I forget it. <laughs> so when you, and you're a medium, you've been a medium for a long time now, a very excellent medium. And um, do you find, I just want to ask this question. When you're communicating, right? So let's say you're communicating with everyday people, right? In the spirit world, spirits. And this is a weird question, but I'll give it to you because you're a weird lady. So can you, when you communicate with star beings or, or guides from the, from the, the luminous worlds, yep. do you find within yourself, you prefer to work with those everyday humans that have passed over or the star beings that come out? Oh, my goodness. I think it, well, for me personally, as Janelle, the star beings and the guides and everybody, I love being a medium. I love working with, you know, everyday people like all of us. Uh, but when you uh, start to move with into that realm, into that layer it's a, it's a different layer of consciousness. Yes. And so we start to really, um, we get downloads, we, we get all sorts of information but senses and feelings. And even in reading sometimes and for very um, particular types of people, that sounds really awful, doesn't it? But, but they have stepped forward with, uh, with, uh, for their human and they have stepped forward, the star beings, and when that first started happening, it was like, right, that's great, I've got an alien now. And, uh, you know, they come in very strongly with their personalities and whatever. But I love working in an altered state, uh, channeling whatever you want to call it and, uh, and allowing that that process and, and i don't know kelly if this is, applies to you as well i know janelle does and myself it did in my development i had many times in the circle where these beings of light would come in and they try to form themselves as humanoids but you know they're not and many students of mine say you know i have these and they're afraid to say it i have these alien beings is that okay yes that's okay yes, that's right yeah, yeah no, I, this absolutely happens with me, and I yeah. love it because I yeah. learn just as much. I'll get information, and I'll Absolutely. say to the, to, I'll be in a session, and I'll say, "Wait a minute, I'm getting some information that I didn't have a clue about," and I'm yeah. so excited when this happens. And there's something magical that when you're working with star seeds, uh, the guides, it takes you out above so much, and it's exciting, and you learn so much, and something about humanity there's something about humanity with it that i just love yeah. it's uh, you know i did a i, I told this once before but it's a, it's a great story it's one of the uh, my connection with shirley mclean which i i mean i started i was very yes. young wondering about shirley mclean and reading a book out in the limb which got me started on my path and i went to brian hurst the medium that recognized it within me that i was a medium and i remember there was a magazine called the interview magazine from new york it was called interview when andy Warhol started it and i remember that she was on the cover of it this is way back in the nine, early 90s and Brian said to me, he said, my guides are telling you to keep on doing your work as a medium. You're going to meet her one day. And of course I did meet her one day, became good friends. And I did a reading for her when she turned 80. I went to her place in Malibu, did a reading. And I'm, it was it was like an, another other reading I ever did before in my life. All that came through are legions of beings, legions and leagues of beings. And of course, those are the words they used that the human could understand it. Yes. But they were all different types of legions that she was a part of. And I said, do you understand this? She goes, oh yeah. And the symbols they gave, certain symbols, certain um, uh, replicas of symbols. And she said that she used to go in the desert with her husband in the 50s or 60s. And they used to see craft all the time. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> I mean, she was really a pioneer, James, with that. Yeah, she that. was. We, a lot of yeah. us wouldn't be here without her, I'll tell you. Right. So. Wow. But That's so think, amazing. I, I, I think it's fabulous. I mean, Australia, when I was in Australia, Janelle, I started seeing a lot of uh, what we want to call them light ships or ship vehicles, oh, vessels okay. all over the place. Down there. Sorry, lovely. You just you just froze. What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I just said when I was down in Australia several times, I would see the starships everywhere. I call them starships yeah. because they're all over them. They're all over them. Yeah. 
Yeah, they are. I'm. I every night. I have a fascination and have since I was a little girl of going outside and looking up. You know, oh, like, yeah. and I didn't even know what that was, but it was just this calling. Well, to, that's a big trait, Janelle, for star yeah. seeds. It's a huge sure. trait. If anybody, that's one of the things that we'll talk about. If you have this yeah. thing, like astrology, like I love looking at those planets. I love yeah. it. I yeah. want to see what's going on. And I, it, to yeah. me, astrology is a roadmap. And I think, and it's a star bean roadmap. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. But we do have a lot of craft down yeah. here and phenomena, and uh, and it's becoming more and more accepted now. Thank and God. you know, once upon a time, we as mediums and psychics, we were like, you know, the freaks of the universe. Well, yeah. now we're kind of ordinary. Not us, of course. Well, we'll never be ordinary, Janelle. Don't say that. We'll never be ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's normal, whatever normal, whatever whatever that is, yeah. normal is. Right. But um, but you know, so now it's shifting, and I think there's right. an awakening and an awareness within on the planet that uh, there's shit out there that's definitely happening. Oh, right, so, absolutely. And I think as our consciousness shifts, our consciousness opens up and and expands more. We open up to those higher levels of beings. Exactly, and yeah. we see more. So the more our consciousness expands, the more we we see those different vibrational frequencies. And it's mm -hmm. the same with mediumship, really, isn't it? It is. It, it really is. It really is. Um, here's a question. This is from Stacey Hansen. She says, I'm wondering the same thing. How do you know if you are a starseed? Yes, well, go, go to the workshop. Go to the workshop because we're going to be talking. If you even ask the question, you probably are one. That's right. Or, exactly. and, if, and if you don't feel that you are, but you have a child that might be a little different and perhaps, you know, uh, has some um, interesting friends and I mean, there's all kinds of ways to tell if you're a star seed. So take the class um, if you can, everybody. It's going to be fabulous. Right. Yeah. I think, too, you'll find that you'll start to settle within all these crazy thoughts you might be having. You'll start to settle and, and understand it and accept it. Yes, yes. And most um, starseeds are empaths. So we'll just start with that. So I have a question for Janelle. <laughs> Thank you, love. So um, out of your guides that you have, that you're aware of the guides that you have, and I know they shift and change, how many of them are, are beings from those levels? Uh, more than two, more than I can only say that because um, at different times in life, one will amplify a little more than another. And I find, and we find that with our guides anyway. One, it, you know, they amplify and come forward um, at certain times. But I've certainly been aware um, of Pladean. I used to call her my Pladean princess, <laughs> and, uh, and she's still around. And oh, if I start talking about that, you know, the tingle start going yeah. and, and all of the thing but um and i know that there's also a uh i think i'm pretty sure and i can only say i think a zeta as well you know from the zeta reticuli so area because there he's shown it he i say he for that one mm -hmm. has shown himself to me uh um subjectively clairvoyantly and and he was very demure um the, the big eyes and uh, the whole you know they, I think they're called greys, I'm not sure, but uh, but just a very tiny, demure, kind of almost um, fragile-looking being as he, as he appeared and amplified. And, um, and, and I felt quite warm and surprised, but he was like a, a coppery-brown kind of colour. It was very, very strange. So, you know, we had these moments, I think, and, and apart from the surprise in the in that second, um, it's we can go back into that space and, and start thinking about the experience and, and gleaning more from them. So I know there's those two for sure. Okay, I, and I have a question for you both. I feel like I'm interviewing both of you, which is fine with me. <laughs> Well, because this is just something I'm thinking about. So today I did a meditation, as Kelly knows, and it was on, you know, for the eclipse. And I got my information from Ram Das, a lovely man. And in the part of the song I played today, he says in the song that we are, you know, part of nature. We are the trees. We are the waterway. We are the flowers. We are everything. That's energy. We're part of all that. We are that. We are, yeah. we are all that. We're all one. There's no separation. As a human yeah. being, we feel like we're separate. That's the biggest illusion we have is separativeness. But really when you... I'm just going to ask this both of you, your thoughts on, so if we are everything, then we are part of those star beings. We're part of those galaxies. We, we are them. 
Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, James. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes total sense because we, and in fact, star seeds are the ones the originally that planted the seeds on earth. I've heard that. You know, which is really interesting. So can you, can you, in your work as mediums, right? Can you tune into that level of wisdom if you need to, not that you're conscious of it, but that you download that when you have a client and maybe there's some high level information they need or something. You can bring that in, can't you, as a medium? Janelle? Absolutely. Yeah. Most definitely. And really it's no different to uh, communicating with a guide or allowing the thought of the guide. And we have to get out of the way, you know, like we would go, oh, my God, it's an alien and blah, blah, blah. We, you know, think <laughs> no, all in a million years. <laughs> I know it's, so new, it's lovely yeah. and gorgeous, but, but we have to move that part of us and just accept and go with it. You know, I've had a... A reading a while ago with someone very very interesting um working with uh, small nuclear plants and all sorts of things so on a big big time in the um, anyway blah blah and i became aware of um another guide or another being that stepped forward just you just over there and um and i said to the fellow you know you know you have star being guides here you know you have an et with us and and he says oh yes i understand all of that and the guide or oh, the the being said um we're watching with great interest um, and because of what they were doing and it's a, like it's a big thing big deal right. and, um and uh so it was very interesting and uh i don't think they like nuclear stuff just just i, I would agree with that i, I don't with that, 100%. think they like it so um so what i understood at that moment was um, you know, that, oh, yes, well, they're looking after you or they're blah, 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 you know, trying to help. Um, but now I believe we're watching. <laughs> you know, don't mess up, please, because it affects us. So right. it's really interesting. So You know, Janelle, and I had a client um, not that long ago whose husband had passed. And as soon as he came through, I, my vibration starts to change and, and, you know, elevate on a lot of different levels. And I said, oh, you're not from here. And he told me, no, he wasn't from here. He was a star seed. And he said, but while he was here, he was a nuclear scientist. Oh, wow. And he was very concerned with what was going on and about getting his work published and what needed his wife to make sure that she had gotten his work taken care of to a, a graduate student because he said she wouldn't understand it, but it's got to get to a graduate student who understands it. Wow. It, was, it was a fascinating experience I, for me. It is incredible. Yeah, I, it's incredible. I just heard my head, and I'm, please forgive me, you guys, but I just heard that Einstein is trying to come through but needs a great mind in order to facilitate that. Wow, I could imagine. Wow. Might be me. <laughs> wow, yeah, I was going to say, probably be my Sorry. grandson. <laughs> Sorry, Albert. <That's> <laughs> Isn't but that it's true. That is true. fascinating. Yeah, wow. it's very cool. Because now, let's talk so about that. that. Let's talk about that, James, because how spirit would work is they would, Einstein would need somebody that the could. The capacity of The their capacity of that. Needs to be expanded to such yeah. a point that they're able to receive that information on a higher, what I call a higher vibration, a higher level, that they're fully able to get it fully through the yes. conceptual part of it, fully through Again, into that human too, to go down, 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 um, and they'll be understood. So I, I've talked about this before, and I'm going to talk about it again, if you don't mind. In Sedona, when I was there, and I talked to Pleiades, the beings of Pleiades, and I'll never forget, it was the feeling I got, that sensation, that we're really trying to dumb it down. They got to bring it all the way down to like a 747 in the head of a needle. And it was like, that was the hard part, was bringing it down to that level so we humans yeah. could get it. It's just yeah. really amazing. The expansiveness of that is just beyond human comprehension. So then probably what will happen, James, is that a star seed soul who is highly advanced will become a medium as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I was, I did, I'm a medium and a therapist, so I can cover that. But I couldn't cover the scientific part. Do you know what no, I mean? Yeah. But you know, I don't know if it's me, if it went through earlier, or to say the stars, the sun, whatever. But when you said that, I thought you meant when you pass into the spirit world that you'd be a medium and that there are mediums over there to bring through information to mediums down here. That so could maybe, happen as well. Maybe it goes, which I do believe it does, because we talk about our guides have guides who have guides. It's right. like a stairway. They go down the next level, down the next level, down the next right. level. 
Right. Well, it's all influence, isn't it? You know, yeah. and expand part of the expansion. And like we were saying earlier, we're we are one. You know, we're all connected. We are all connected. Mm -hmm. And and, and I think the reason that star seeds are so important right now and. It is because of Earth. Earth is going to be going through all kinds of shifts. With these planets right now, we're going to see earthquakes. We had a 4.8 earthquake on the East Coast. That's unheard of. Unheard of. Just a couple of days ago. It's unheard of. But I think that Earth is going to be making a lot of changes. And I feel that the starseed beings, you're right, you guys, that it would they would be concerned about the activity on, on this planet. <clears throat> I but think we, also that they'd be very they'd be very concerned with the responsibility that humans do things don't do things. I think the responsibility for I know they hate wars. Like well, there's got to right. be a sense of responsibility of having a war. Yes. Like why would you do that? And 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 how could you hurt other human beings? We're all connected as one. When you're hurting one, you're hurting us. You're hurting everyone. We're all hurting if you hurt one human being. So right. just get that awareness out to the humans on this earth is a big mm -hmm. deal. But we need to do that because by hurting one, you're hurting all of us. Exactly. And we feel it, you know, yeah. we as empaths feel it and know, understand it. And it's very disheartening. It, it know, really is. The point where you just almost give up, you know. So well, you I, I, I think it's the evolution of the planet. As Kelly often says, we come back for these reasons with what we chose to come back here. But yeah. I, I do think that the, there are certain things that we could say destiny, but I do think that human beings make those choices. And those choices that they make may not be good choices maybe it's from yeah. the ego maybe it's from that power maybe you know it's it's a tough one it's a real it's, tough. Yeah. it's yeah. like a yeah. jigsaw puzzle for god's sake you know it really sure is. is it is and it's going to be fascinating to see how it all turns out isn't it <laughs> but yeah and as if, we if, go if it's a war and if there are wars i think there will be a war i think we have to within ourselves have that sense of relationship who we are and that we are souls having this human experience that love is the only way we can't be in fear we can't be in fear because fear is not going to do anything. It's going to hold everything back. But love has got to be the only way out. Love and that's what's got to expand, the awareness of, exactly. of love, the consciousness of empathy, the consciousness of compassion. That's got to expand. And that yeah. we're greater than just this, you know, we're some of the parts here. Exactly. Yeah. And we do count. We don't think we count. You know, or what is one voice or what is one right. sentiment? But really, you know, like you say, James, thoughts are things. Okay. And so and thoughts are things and they permeate the universal frequency. And so that expands too. So it's our job to think, oh, well, let's give it a go. So, we've, so we move into the centre with prayerful thought and openness and heart. And, and that then starts to affect everything and not the anger that we see on certain parts of the planet. It, it, it's the rippling effect, Janelle. The yeah, ripple. totally. So whenever I see a television show or news or whatever about war, I send love. Anything yeah. about negativity, I turn on the positivity. I send love to that newscast or that person or the person hurt by war. I'll just send love. I'll, the, I call yeah. it pink lighting. I'll send unconditional love, pink lighting to Beautiful. them. Change yeah. the frequency because it's that rippling effect. We're all connected to it. Exactly, exactly, totally. I love that. Exactly. It's our responsibility as em empaths and mediums down here yeah. to help with bringing that energy to people and to open up that space for people. To, you know, and everybody has a choice. Every single individual has a choice. They want to live in fear. They want to live in love. And it can be pretty scary. But I think fear is more scary than love. Oh, <laughs> oh love is scary. <laughs> But <laughs> that's another love. story. That's yeah. another show. <laughs> another show, Janelle. Another show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you guys, I had a very ex funny, I don't know, funny experience, but I'm sure, and Janelle, I'm curious if you've had this experience, and James, I'm curious if you've had this experience. I did a reading, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago um, for a woman who, who I did not know. She came to see me, and her husband had passed. Her husband came right through, and he starts with, apologizing now in my mind i thought i'm trying to move myself out of the equation is he apologizing because he died suddenly because he tells me he dies suddenly he's in a car accident and he dies and he's gone and he's she's and i said to her oh he's, he's very he's very sorry about that way he passed and she said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i said and now he's talking about um a box in the closet a box with um, it's an orange box it's got some sort of a not a ring it's like a bracelet inside with um initials and she said Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And I said, and I heard him say, this is what this is about. And I go, 
oh, was there an indiscretion? <laughs> and she said, you bet there was. And I'm so mad at that son of a bitch. And I'm, I'm I mean, I'm, I hate doing counseling between, um, you know, um, couples. I can't stand couples counseling as a therapist. I can't stand it. So now I'm doing couples counseling with this, you know? I know, it's crazy. And then I said, he's telling me, though, that you have a new, you're involved with somebody. And she said, very proudly, I am. <laughs> and I was laughing so hard. And then I said to her, do, do you realize and do you understand that with his indiscretion, because he was having an affair and he dies suddenly. And I understand the betrayal piece of it, but there is. And this is where the, the part of um, as a medium that you work with, with compassion and understanding you. I said, I just want to give you another lens to view this situation. It's possible that you were in another lifetime had this experience and did this to him. Yeah. It's yeah. very possible. And she said, really? And I said, yeah, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. And be I said it because I had to be clear between this energy, you know, this anger and all of this for what? Yeah. yeah. Kind well, of fast. More than likely it was a past life. More than likely. Yeah. Throw that yeah. to us, even at the balance of the karma. So more yeah. than likely. She was responsible too. So she's got the responsibility. Yeah. 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 Oh, it we was don't something. Know that when we're in our human form, do we? We don't know that going no. through. <laughs> and I'm know. just the medium. You know, don't shoot oh. me. I'm just the medium here. No, no, don't funny. shoot the messenger. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger, for God's sakes. You know, oh, yeah. God. I've had it too, Kel, you know, like, uh, and, you know, we go a bit off here, but but uh, the, the husband came through from the spirit world and then they'd had, you know, all these problems, breakups and indiscretions and all sorts of things. And he was very disinterested in her when, when he was here. And he's apologising left, right and centre. Right. And she just looked at me in the, and I'm laughing. Right. Um, terribly professional and she slammed her fist down on the table and she said i don't care if he's coming through from wherever he's coming from he didn't give an f about me when he was alive and i don't give an f about him now that he's dead <laughs> And I started laughing. And he's going, I'm really sorry. I'm yeah. really sorry. I mean, and, See and what I was dealing him. with. It's so weird, you know. And, yeah. and, and she just didn't care. And I said, look, mate, I'm really sorry. We can't, you know, just hang out, just see what happens. But, yes, we do have these funny, like it's serious but funny yes. at the same time. I mean, they get so involved in the human part of themselves. I mean, it's yeah, like yeah. Terrible. It's like people say to me, like, uh, it's happened for you guys too, where the, their parents were married for 50 years. Well, um, your mother said she's not with your father anymore. What do you yes. mean they were together 50 years? Well, they don't belong together anymore. What do you yeah. mean? <laughs> she's going to a different place and he's in a different place. They're finding their, you know, yeah. I don't understand that. Well, there's a big world yeah. out there, you know, worlds yeah. out there. Well, they've met up with somebody that they hated in life and there was a big, you know, big thing. You know, it's part of being a medium and people, yeah. you know, we learn so much. That's how we learn our craft, to be perfectly honest, is experiencing these things. And uh, and we do meet up with our enemies, you know, or people we hated in life and all hate yes. us. Well, we let me ask you, have you had this experience, Janelle? And I know, James, you and I have had this experience. I'm sure you had it where a soul comes in, you're doing the, you know, you're doing your reading, a soul comes in, you know, I have so-and-so here and he says, you know, da, 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 I don't want to see him. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Plenty, plenty of times you do that. I, I had a lady, this is a really funny story. I, when I was in Brazil, I brought a lot of people in Brazil, this lady named Magda Best. And Magda Best, about four foot five, Hungarian lady. She was metaphysics for 30 years, she took metaphysics. What a character, a real character, lives at the top of the Topanga Canyon, Kelly. Oh, I was her, just going to say where all the ETs are, actually. Yes. Yeah. And her husband um, did the, um, uh, he came up with Samsonite luggage, one of his patents was Samsonite luggage, the Whoa. shopping cart, so on and on and on. Wow. And I'll never forget that she, um, she said to me, I was at a demonstration in, in for Burbank, and a lady came through, and it was this, her sister. She wants to say the Magda. Magda. She goes, yes, that's my sister. She's sitting in the audience. She goes, that's my sister. I didn't like her in life. I don't want to see her now. Send her back. <laughs> <laughs> Send her back. Send her back. Oh, it's great, isn't it? I know. It's hysterical. But well, what do you guys and do? That is the, it's an opportunity like for, it's probably yeah. an opportunity that the spirit woman, the sister, wants to say, I'm sorry. She wants to apologize. You know, they really work hard, as Mamey used to say, we work for them. We don't work for the living, we work for the spirit. That's right. 
And, and it's an opportunity for them to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, yeah. because that's why we do mediumship. We do work for them, not for the living. But it's an interesting quandrum, you know, when, you, when that happens to us. Sure is. And they all apologize invariably. Right. Every single person that comes through apologizes. Yeah. So get used to it, kids. We're all going to be apologizing once we've taken off. <laughs> it's into so the true. Yeah, <laughs> they all apologize, you know, for whatever. So, Do you guys ever is. have this one where they'll say, well, I'm waiting for the special secret word that we're going to have. Oh, my God. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> yes. Okay. You've told them everything else on right. the planet not yeah. the bloody word but the that secret they word oh is i actually said the secret word once swear oh. god it just came out that whatever the secret word yeah. was and i was just going on and on with whatever and she stopped me and said that's the secret word i said what because yeah. i said so much you know it was yeah. like that one yeah. bluebell i don't know whatever yeah. it was it yeah was thank you funny. i did a show tv show once and i got a secret word for a kid and the kids uh, the father's son and the father went crazy and i'm like he had so much great information, evidential information, but that one word, he believed it. it was like, what about all the other things about your father's? Yeah, name? exactly. They miss it, but I but know. perhaps there's something in it that that they will think about, you know, later on. And it's true of any reading, you know. Well, um, don't you get that where people will send yeah. you an email later and say, yeah. "Wow, you know, I thought about this two weeks went by, and yeah. you know, this, 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 and this. You were yeah. right on this, this, yeah. this, and this." Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I talked about this before, Kelly, and, and Janelle, you've heard this story, but it's such a great story. When I was in uh, Canada, once well, my first tour there, I forget what city it was, it must have been about a thousand people in this ballroom. And the first reading up was a man who came through and he said, um, my son is here and I, I'm uh, the first um, uh, person in Canada to have a liver transplant and my son has my chest board. And oh, I looked, and no, that's pretty specific. It's very specific. Audience, no one raised their hands. That, that, no. That whole, no one raised their hands. And I'm like, I know what I'm hearing. I know I'm getting. Right. No one raised their hand, and for you to have to leave a spirit in that place, as you guys know, it's a horrible oh, thing. Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. So I moved on, which I never do. I didn't want to. At in the front of a that, thousand people, James. In front of a thousand people, right? Yeah. In front of a thousand people. So you got to really know yourself. So at the end uh, of the demonstration, two hours later, I went and I did a book signing. And the first person up was this guy who said, well, that was pretty amazing. And my father I said, your father? Yeah, the first reading with the liver transplant. That was my father and I was chessboard. And I said, well, why didn't you say something? He said, well, you knew it was him and I knew it was him. So that's a little Oh, matter. my God. And okay. I kicked him out of the ballroom. I said, goodbye. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> this. Punch them. But wait a minute. I don't know if you remember this, but when we were in Alaska, the three of us did a link. We did a few of them. Yes. And I started the first link. And I said, I have a woman here who has a baby at 16. And I was pretty specific about 16. Very specific. And yeah. 16, she has a baby and there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, what is the word for it? She felt, you know, really awful about the fact that she had a baby at 16. A lot of, not guilt, but just, yeah. um, she just felt, I don't know, just awful about it. Shame, that's the word. There's a lot of shame around it. And I kind of went through all of this and and then one woman raised her hand and said, well, my mother had me at 17. And I'm intuitively, I knew that wasn't the woman, but nobody was. And I kept saying, are you sure it's that? And nobody other than this other woman. Well, after the reading, James, and I don't know if you remember this, you guys, you might remember, remember. This, a woman came up to me and said, it was me. Yes. I, it was me, but my mother, I was, you know, there's so much shame around it. I couldn't even raise my hand. <laughs> now this is a different generation. She couldn't even raise her hand. <laughs> What are you going to do? Know. There's no, and she was that, crying. She was crying and sobbing and all of this. Yes, that's was. Right. And, you know, I kind of went, well, you know, and walked. And walked. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> Time for a drink. We need but, to but stand that's oh, the reading then. Oh, can you continue on? No. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it was like, like unbelievable. Yes, yeah. 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 When you're a medium, many of these things happen, everybody. And it's, it's, exactly. it's part of mediumship. Welcome to mediumship. You deal with yes. humans. It's really yeah, not, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job, but how fun is it to do triple links? Oh, oh it's it. great fun. We had a lot of fun yeah. and we call it fun, but it's, <laughs> uh, and it is. And, uh, but it's really amazing how that yeah. works too, isn't it? You know, we, we walk into the infinite and, uh, and it's quite easy just to step into that, that frame. And, what a beautiful uh, scene. I love yeah. that, Janelle. I'm going to remember that. Yes, we'll have to find the recording yeah. and I'll see what it says. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's true. And we do walk into that. And, uh, and you know, your students are amazed. You know, I remember starting to teach double links or whatever to students. And and they would go, can you do that? Yeah. And I'd go, yes. You know, it's, it's just, you're just working in the same vibration. You're in the same field. So just start listening and sensing, you know, and, yes. and, 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 um, 
working with one another, you know, so. Uh, and the funny this, thing is, Janelle, which, which is really, uh, people should know that in a double link and a triple link, um, that the spirit people will use the different aspects of the medium. So exactly. there are different life experiences and so forth that one medium has that the other one doesn't. And exactly. the spirit will use all those different aspects. And that's why it makes it so, so full yeah. and such a yeah. solid message. You get all those yeah, aspects exactly. together. Yeah, because we all three have different messages. Yeah, exactly. And it's still, it's still the same person, a different mm -hmm. aspect of that one human. And so think about, you know, as students, um, we are not cardboard cutouts. We have so many layers and so many life experiences and personalities, uh, depending on what's going on. So the spirit people are the same. They've had exactly the same experiences. Why right. would they just be, you know, oh, you know, five foot eight and blue eyes and right. whatever. How boring. Oh, my I, gosh. You know, I tell my students that when they're doing work, the picture like you're painting a portrait of someone and the colors of the paints that you use have you all different degrees of that color of paint. So the shadowing and the texture mm -hmm. of that paint color are their mm -hmm. personality traits as you're portrait, you know, painting that portrait. Mm -hmm. And you have to bring that in. And yeah. uh, very, very true. Speaking of mediumship, by the way, I just remembered everybody. Um, my mediumship one class is fifty percent off right now for the next day on my school. Mediumship wow, one, James. mediumship one certification. I just remembered it's the mediumship certification <laughs> number one. Oh, Renee has it on there. Okay, fifty percent off. That's incredible. Off. Yeah, because wow. so many people want to do it, and um, I just want to throw this at them in the beginning of the you know the spring and a new life. And as you know, mediumship to me, I'm sure to you guys, it fulfills your life in so many ways. It's oh, just so yeah. fulfilling. Uh, nothing like it's it. Deeply nothing fulfilling. Like it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing and, like it. No. And you change. If you, you don't change. change, if you don't change, you're not doing it right. So yeah, true. your soul changes. You learn who yeah. you are. You you have to change. Yeah, that's yeah. a great one, Janelle. If you don't change, yeah. you don't, and you have to know, it, it teaches you who you are very quickly. Sure, does. sure <laughs> does. And you know, a lot of people are. You know, we've all had ex life experiences, and we're going through trauma, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, but we can still work on our mediumship and our soul aspect, and uh, while we're healing, and uh, you know we get it helps us heal along the way. We have greater understanding. So if you're drawn, and I'm not talking psychotic or really bad sort of stuff that that we can go through, and Kelly knows all about that. Yeah. But uh, but along the way, we can be going through trauma or loss and grief and still experiencing an awakening and an opening. And I think that partly is part of the plan too. So, you know, nurture yourself, that's for sure, mm -hmm. but accept these extraordinary, miraculous things that are going on to, as well. Well, and on Earth, when we incarnate, we're going to have experiences like you know, we'll have some traumas we'll have some betrayals we'll have some you know illnesses we'll have some things to grow part of and being human part it's part of being, of being human. human it's really the human experience and it really does open us up it cracks us open james yeah for many yeah. for many events <laughs> we're all cracked it's okay we're, we're all cracked <laughs> coming up with book titles and, <laughs> But it's all about our growth and what have we learned from these experiences. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. What, do you, what do you expect, Janelle, in your mediumship coming up in the future? How do you want to see your mediumship in the future? What do you expect? Oh, what do you wish I, to get uh, see in your mediumship or how is it going to uh, evolve? Or What do you think? Yeah, it's certainly expanding in yeah. ways that I never thought. Well, you don't. Well, the thing is, you don't know what you don't know, do you? And uh, once you start on the journey, it's a case of, oh, this stuff's happening, and let me try and figure it out. But as you move through the the years of it, and it's not a six month course, and you're on, it's uh, you know, it's a years. Life. Years, yeah, it's a life. It sure is. But other things start to open up. And your awareness of of what what the world is, and I'm not talking about the physical world. I'm talking about, you know, the etheric and the and the, whatever the, this matrix is that we are, and uh, and I just feel that uh, for me that expansion will continue into the wonderment of uh, all that there is. Now, I know that, you know, it's probably not going to happen in one lifetime, and I don't know that that answers the question easily, but but there's well, no then let, me, let me throw this at you then, since you just said that. 
that it opens up that wonderment and then maybe does that set up you in the next lifetime that you come back oh, and continue, oh yes you continue where you were you could yes moving. I was speaking to a friend uh, only a few days ago and uh, and I was saying I'm setting things up now that I'm going to be uh, hopefully looking forward to in a future life. And it's not so much that, oh, yes, I want this and, you know, the physical stuff we want. It's my spirit. I'm setting up my soul, my purpose, my journey and the way I want to be. And so I'm setting that up for a future destination. And who's to say that that future <laughs> destination isn't calling out to me to That's say, right. I'm not thinking about it That's now because in 300 years we're going to be working together, you know. No, that's so, very true. And your future destination may not be Earth. That's right. Oh, that won't be. <laughs> and I can tell you right now. <laughs> no can do. I think we have come from that other place anyway. You know, often when uh, I, I work in, um, with people in an altered state or whatever channeling, you know, they'll remind us, they'll, they want to remind the audience or the people that you are not from here. Remember that. You are not from here. And uh, and it's to get everyone out of that earthly, physical, kind of materialistic state of mind. Yeah. Here's a question, and this is from Yogi Kotecha. Dear speakers, as your mediumships were developing, as your skills were developing, did you need to sit with a message for a couple of minutes before communicating the right message? Not so much, not so much, because we are a conduit. Uh, a you know, when you're first learning, sometimes you want to edit the information. You know, you want to run it through your brain and say, can I accept that? Is that okay to say? And, of course, you learn learn to loosen that hold. But but now we're a conduit and uh, and I just allow the thoughts and feelings and sentiments to come forward as they are. But do no harm. What that do you is do, Kelly? I... Initially, I when I first began, I would edit the messages yep. because I was always concerned with the yep. feelings of the other person and how they were going to respond and all this. And now it's slowed down enough. And I don't know how to say this exactly, but it's slowed down enough and fast enough at the same time. Yep. Does that make yep. sense? It slows and fast at the same time yep. here. And that um, helps me to just let the message out. For me, it's um, I find now it's the fullness of the message. I have to bring through the exact emotional component of the fullness. It's my job now as a medium, I get that message to really try to bring as much fullness of that emotional charge that the spirit is bringing into that message and the fullness of that message to be presented. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's always an emotion behind the message. Yeah. And yeah. I, got, I have to be able to bring that as much as I can, that emotional charge with that message. That's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it expands as you become more confident. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your confidence does play a big role. But it's also, um, Janelle, something interesting in that, in that, what you said, which is to do pause. I think pausing is everyone's felt very good to do in that you as a medium are learning as you're going as well. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. often like, wow, I love it. And so I was like, wow, that's so great. That's so cool to hear that. Wow, that's, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. That's you what it's all really. Open. Yeah, I think so. We, we learn. We're part of the, the learning It's an art of discovery. We always got to be willing to discover new things with every single message that comes through. Yeah, totally. Here's a, I, maybe we should take, well, I've got to take this question. How does one move themselves out of heavy grief and loss to be able to receive a message? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's um, a hard else? question. Well, we've all experienced that. And uh, sometimes when you're caught up in the physicality of it and definitely grief and trauma is a big deal um, and we have to experience that in the human component exactly. but as you start to you sometimes you can actually observe it as well I found with myself that I would step out of the situation and go oh man this you know this is too overwhelming so I would just breathe and then step out of it and just observe and I would just say things like wow this is what 
grief feels like or this is what trauma feels like. And then that starts to allow the heart to open little by little and, uh, and show you the way forward. And so once you can start to get the mind out of the way, the, the physical out of the way, you'll find that your guides and everybody's there, the, the person you've lost, they're all there waiting anyway. They're all trying to get information through. So you have to then just look I don't know, for signs and whatever it is. So I, I think you're 100% right. Exactly what you said. I was going to say, but say it differently. Exactly the same thing that humanness, we have to, it's part of the human experience, grief. Yeah. And we got to realize that it shouldn't hold us back, that it is an experience for us to go through, not stay at, but go through it. And yeah. of course, you val validate your love for that person. But as you said, the most important thing is that there is no end. You'll see them again. And that's yeah. the most important thing. Your love continues on. There is no end to love. Love continues on. Yeah. Grief is love anyway. Love is grief. Grief is love. So sure. Very loss. Yeah. So, but you can do it. It does work. It does. And it's hard. It's so hard, boy. It's a real tough Oh, time. Even yeah. losing a child. I think one of the hardest lessons on the earth is losing a child. Yeah, I think I so really too. do. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's a big one. And here's a question from Patricia Stanko. She says, do our loved ones miss us? <sighs> I think they do. I like to think that because I have loved ones that I miss. But mm -hmm. I think they 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 miss the physical as well. You know, I can't touch you physically. You know, they miss that. And uh, but they they can reach us in other ways. So, I my short answer is yes. But they're not grieving. They're not going through the trauma that we might be going through. Um, but and they don't like us uh, experiencing experiencing that no, they don't. but yeah they don't and they don't. Uh, the sooner we can move through they it, it's easier they, they, they lighten see them up too yeah yeah t exactly it lightens them so so that is my story yeah, they, they, they do miss us i mean I, I agree totally they miss us um it's yeah. so funny because they're outside of time time means nothing to them um and then i was one i don't know i, was, I have a connection with someone who did the reading for in the early 90s and um, I don't know, I thought about them one day and they came back really quickly and said, oh, James, that was so long, long ago. That was such an old yeah. memory ago. But, yeah. you know, they're still a part of us, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of yeah. the greatest things that happen when we pass to the other side, we see them again and relive old memories. Memories yes. are real. Memories can only be created down here, not in the spirit world. So we bring those memories with us when we go over. Right. And Debbie Wallace says, do they feel and hear our prayers? Always. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger. They hear it really well. It's really like amplification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they beautiful. often, sorry, James, in a I, reading, I they'll often yeah. say that. You know, that's how I've heard your thoughts at night or whatever, you know. And and uh, it's uh, definitely, they hear everything. They, they hear feel. everything. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't miss a thing. Um, oh, Anna, Anna Franquez says, can our loved ones and spirits see us all the time or only when we call on them? No. They, they see us they, all the time. Yeah. They're around. They're around. <laughs> <laughs> get used to it. You know, get used to it. They're around all they're the time. They're around. <laughs> yeah. You're always being looked at from one way or another, folks. Yeah. So let's <laughs> <laughs> you're never alone like, they're always you know, things. I, it's actually yeah, not possible right. to be alone i i when no. i was seen through the veil nobody is alone it's actually yeah. not possible yeah it's true no very true so, yeah it's funny yeah, sometimes i don't wish we were alone but we're not alone <laughs> i know <laughs> but i think in those personal private moments you kind of have to switch that off and just say you know the door is closed now fellas right. i think Bye. they respect us sitting on the toilet i think they do respect that <laughs> they part do. of it because <laughs> they're not interested in those things they're just not no you know, no no, no it's not. not about that no it's yeah. funny a lot of my friends are passed over and, and our loved ones I, I try to get them in and they say, oh, I said, well, where have you been? I'm really busy over here. I don't have time. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm really I'm just, busy. All right. I'm really busy. I'm, what are you yeah. doing? I'm going to school. I'm doing right. work. Yeah. I'm, I'm going person. to a concert. I'm going to, a concert. I'm going to the museums. Going to yeah. school. Yeah, they're busy over there. It's a busy, yeah. busy, busy world. <laughs> we have to take a ticket, don't we? <laughs> we do. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is very true. This is great. Um, <laughs> well, okay, everybody. I just want to make sure that if you want to take our class with Star Seeds with Janelle, oh, yes. it is May 10th in the United States, May 11th in Australia. If you cannot attend live, purchase it, and then when we are going to record it, yeah, and record. once it's purchased ahead of time, we will send it to you after we have recorded it. 
So please join us for are you is it on Facebook, Kelly? Is it it's Facebook? going to be on Zoom. Zoom. On Zoom. On Zoom. Yeah. So anywhere in the world can watch it. It's going to be great. And James, you've got a class. Uh, your mediumship fifty percent off. Fifty percent off mediumship one certification course right now. So go to JP School Mystical Arts, and um, and I'll be in this. I'll be at your course as well. Yay! <laughs> oh, that's going to be so fun. Oh, that's, that's going to be great, James. We're going to love that. Yeah, we're going to love that. Oh my gosh! Well, How thank you. Be yeah, <laughs> or not. <laughs> well, thank you, Janelle, so much for being here tonight. Oh, my pleasure. And stay on, Janelle. All right, take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thank James. You, everybody. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. <laughs> James and Kelly Show.